Welcome to Field to Fork Cooking with Abby J. Today's program is brought to you in part by Ingalls Supermarkets and the Ingalls Table. Now here's chef and host of the show, Abby J, to introduce her special guest for today's show. Welcome to Field of Fork. I'm Abby J, and today I'd like to welcome my guest, Bruce Leon Brown. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I, I'm really excited to be here. I think we're going to have some fun. We are. And Bruce, you were featured in the Ingalls Magazine. You can find that. This is this at your local Ingalls. Yep. And at the deli, usually we're in the front door. Right, right. And he, you were featured with your Denver Strata. Denver Strata. And today, what are we making? We're going to do a different kind of strata today. Now, strata is Italian for many, many layers. Right, right. No, it's not. I just made that up. Right. But anyway, <laughs> but it, no, but but it, it, but it, <laughs> it makes sense. It is. But anyways, mm. what I wanted to do today, since it's field to fork, I want to mm. use some fresh vegetables. So we're going to make what I call a Christmas Day strata, but you can make this any time of year. Fresh asparagus, fresh tomatoes, mm -hmm. roasted red peppers. But first, we have to learn how to prep the asparagus. Absolutely. And root vegetables are in, so uh, yeah, uh, winter exactly. vegetables, anything green is good for you. So let's get started. Okay. So I've got a pot of boiling water, but with a fresh asparagus like this, you have a, a, an edible end with the crown, and then you have an end that's kind of woody. Now, if it's a smaller, you know, something like this, if it's a smaller spear of asparagus, you don't want to spend time trying to peel the right. end. So here's the, the key, because, you know, it's so simple, it's a snap, literally. All you have to do is take a spear and break there it, you go. and it breaks at the woody end off and leaves only the edible part left. So you see, you can do so many of them real quick. In they kind of snap where they want to snap too. Yeah, exactly. To, to where you don't cut You don't them. have to worry you about get... cutting them or anything mm -hmm. like that. This right. works like a charm. But the good thing about asparagus like this is that then when you have the leftover bottom part, the woody parts, don't throw those away. Throw them in a pot of uh, boiling water with some uh, like the tops of your onions and right. the onion skins mm -hmm. and with some celery uh, roots and stuff like that. And make a vegetable stock. I mean, it makes a mm. great stock. Oh, and with it gives kale. It flavor. And, I mean, chicken stock. You I bet. mean, you can make a great soup with all exactly. of those things. Mm -hmm. And keep it in, in uh, if you want to, in your freezer, an ice cube trays, wherever you want. So we're going to blanch the asparagus. So first, I have a pot of boiling water here. Okay. And all I do is take the asparagus and put it in the boiling water for about mm -hmm. 20 seconds just enough where it's going to open up all the membranes, all the pores, mm -hmm. it's going to brighten the color and soften the outside just a touch. It's like we're mm -hmm. parboiling the asparagus. But off on the side, we have ready an ice bath. Ice water mm -hmm. in a container, so that you don't want to cook a real long time, you still want it to be crispy and fresh, but look at that oh, color. Oh, that's beautiful. You can see mm -hmm. the color. Dip it immediately into ice water, just like this, and guess what you have? You have brightly colored, flavorful asparagus that has stopped cooking because we're putting it in the ice water. And guess what? They get two recipes because this one's different. Exactly. Yeah. This one, the Denver Strata in the magazine, has uh, ham, onions, and peppers in it. Right. But today's we're doing a vegetarian because it's field to fork. Well, it's filled with fork and also winter time, and this, these are the really good things that at the you know New Year's everybody makes resolutions to lose weight, and these um, vegetables, the root vegetables especially, have a lot of vitamins and so many things exactly. that are good for you, and especially if you're trying to lose a few pounds. My New Year's yeah. resolution every year is to stop step to stop stepping on baby ducks. <laughs> Such. <laughs> So we're going to clean this off and we're going to come back to get our uh, asparagus diced up and get ready to make the strata. Okay, we'll be right back. At Ingalls, we know the ever-present struggle of what am I going to make for dinner this week? That's why we started the Ingalls Table. It's a website that brings the best chefs and food experts right into your kitchen. You can sort through hundreds of recipes for every occasion. 
watch how-to videos, and print shopping lists to take to the store. It's all waiting for you at IngallsTable.com. Until next time, I'll see you online. Ingles, low prices, love the savings. Welcome back to Field of Fork, and we're making a strata. So where are we with this? Okay, I, I'm gonna have Abby J mix up all the cheese for me. I've got sharp cheddar cheese, I've got shredded mozzarella and Parmesan cheese. Okay. She's gonna dump them all in the bowl, toss them all together. I'm gonna make the vegetable mixture that's gonna go in the middle of our strata. We have our blanched asparagus, so I'm, while I'm dicing these up, I'll tell you a little bit about Bruce's Fabulous Foods over in Marion, North Carolina, the thriving metropolis of Marion, North Carolina. Um, nice little town, but uh, I make 170 flavors of cheesecake from scratch. Mm. And, and they are delicious. And 37 flavors of hummus. And, and you now, ship. You ship those cheesecakes, We right? ship cheesecakes all over the country. Yes, right. ma'am. And that, that's why yeah. it keeps me busy in between lunch shifts. So the asparagus, about half inch to three quarters mm -hmm. of an inch long right. segments, diced up. To the asparagus, I'm going to add Roma tomatoes, seeded okay. and diced up. Green onions. Like I said, remember I said in the beginning... This is more of like a, what I call a Christmas day strata, because it's so much red and green. And roasted red peppers. Nice. Drained, uh -huh. diced up. Now, if you want to uh, go on ahead and like blister some red peppers and, mm -hmm. and do your own, it works out really great. Or you can just buy the ones right off the shelf at Ingalls. Mm -hmm. And uh, the roasted red peppers are probably the hardest thing to do. But, you know, there are so many products readily available. Not well, if you roast them, you're going to get more flavor. So yes, exactly. And they are get. fresher. Mm -hmm. but, right. So we mix this all up together. <clears throat> That's looking Vegetables really are, Look how pretty that is. Exactly. Really I mean, pretty. just the colors. A little mm -hmm. black pepper and a little salt. Mm -hmm. Actually, a little bit more salt. And just uh, toss that all together. And we have our cheese ready. We have our, ready. our filling ready. We have our bread ready. The bread is just a simple, like a two-pound loaf of white bread right. that with my electric knife, I cut off all the crusts. Don't throw away your crusts. Mm -hmm. Dice them up. Season with a little baking grease or olive oil, whatever you want, a little garlic powder and salt. Croutons. Toast them in the oven. You got homemade croutons just like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the last thing you need for a strata is custard. And custard is basically a combination mm. of eggs and milk, dairy, some kind. Yeah. Now you can use milk. I've got whole milk here, but uh, I've actually made this before with he with a uh, whipping cream, sour uh, cream, maybe sour cream. Not as much. A little bit too, t a too. little tang in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit, but uh, but the thing is that I, if you really want a rich strata, heavy whipping cream is the way to mm. go. 36%, 40%. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. More, well, of course, fat means flavor. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're just breaking. You notice I'm not breaking the eggs on the side of the bowl. Hey, bad, bad. Do not do that. Just pop them on your tabletop, just like you see me doing here. And, they, and you will not get shells breaking up into the egg as you're putting it into the bowl. Or break okay. them beforehand to make sure they're all Yes, good. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can break them into another cup or whatever you need to do. Now, we're going to get that lightly stirred up. Make sure all the yolks are broken. There is one thing I think that is my pet peeve. I do not like, personally, pre-ground nutmeg. I like fresh ground nutmeg. Now, if you mm -hmm. look, this is half of a nutmeg nut, but if you look at the, the inside of the nut... A lot of people don't realize the inside of a nutmeg nut is gorgeous. It looks like a piece of art. It's really pretty. Nutmeg in the grocery store is usually pre-ground. It's kind of like a reddish brown. It shouldn't be. It should be beige. So I'm just going to take this nutmeg nut with my microplane, just like this, and grind in about a teaspoon. It smells so... It's, such it's a, so pungent and yes, so fresh and so good. Oh, I smell it from here. That's good. Nice. Nutmeg, just like that. And whip the nutmeg in with four cups, three and a half to four cups of milk. Whole milk is what I'm using right here. I have a lot of people that will say, oh, I can't do whole milk because of the fat content. I think, okay, use 
fat-free, use 1% use, whatever you have in your house. Uh, if you're not worried about it, like I said before, use half milk, mm -hmm. half, half heavy whipping cream, works like a charm. And you know, if you want to spice it up, you can you put a jalapeno pepper in this. Oh yeah, exactly. Of course I'm going to say that because <clears throat> that means more flavor too. Exactly. Now, I have my decrusted bread. We have everything all ready to go. It's very simple to put together. Nine by 13. Mm -hmm. I start off with like six pieces of bread right across the bottom, mm. just like this. Put them in, but you see they don't quite all fit. So I will take one piece, cut it to thirds and fill in the gaps in the middle. Okay? You got that? That's, I got it. That's hey, one layer is, of bread. This is all about then, a really nice uh, casserole and, that you can <clears throat> You can even freeze it. You can, you can, you you can, can do make so it many a things. day ahead. Yeah. If you do this the day ahead, wrap it up, put it in the fridge overnight. When you get up the next morning, mm -hmm. go throw it in the oven while you're taking your shower or whatever, getting ready the next morning, having a cup of coffee. An hour later, you've got breakfast ready to go. But the key to this, to Estrada, is making sure that you let it set up and all the custard is absorbed overnight. Right. Okay. It means just more flavor. Exactly. If you half, do that. half the vegetables, yeah. mm -hmm. about a third of the cheese. And this doesn't have to be exact. Trust me, just sprinkle it around just like this. And guess what? We're going to do the same exact thing. Repeat the yeah. same exact layering. Now you notice as you go up the sides of the, uh, the pan here that you have a little bit more room each and every single layer. So we're going to cut another piece of bread mm -hmm. and put it in the middle here so you have enough. And then we're going to cut another piece. You know, Bruce, like I, I, I have to just say, you have so much inspiration uh, with this. And you, you. you show so much love and passion for food. Oh, uh, I have a blast with food. Um, you can tell. Tell, <laughs> the, well, tell the audience, really, uh, what inspires you. Because, you know, the, there's to, to make 170 flavors of cheesecake, guys, you know, I, that, I, that's something. I, I, I like mean, I'm, being, I'm impressed. Yeah, I like being different. I like doing different things that everybody else a lot of times doesn't put together doesn't really mm -hmm. you know connect two and two um i grew up as the youngest of six kids mm -hmm. big family and all the older siblings i mean the next one up behind above me is like nine years older mm -hmm. than me all my older siblings got to have all the fun jobs in the house. Right. I got thrown in the kitchen with mom. Well, upright. see, and there's a reason for this. Just exactly. look at this amazing strata and, so and even all when the I was different things old, that you've become. I mean, other than stepping on those ducks. I just, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay, so we've got the rest of the vegetables in it. Right. The second half of the vegetables. We're going to put another mm -hmm. layer of cheese, just like this. And like I said, this is some. You don't have to do vegetables. If you want to make a pepperoni pizza strata with pe anything, pepperoni, steak, and diced it can tomatoes, be anything. And you can do yeah. yeah, just about anything. Okay, so more bread. Got that. And then the last layer of bread, just like this. By this time, it's almost fully ready to get. Can you tell the audience how you became an Ingalls Table Celebrity Chef? I am one of, the, one of the resident chefs on WLOS in Asheville, and I uh, do a, a segment on there called Carolina Kitchen, and mm -hmm. it just got to the point that I think so many people saw me doing Carolina Kitchen segments, they asked me to come do Ingalls, uh, simply due to the fact that... Um, they liked you, that and I, you, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, they knew you. I don't have a very big filter, you know, I just, <laughs> and, but that's the way really? I am. That's the way I was built. Now... Yeah, let me tell you something, one other quick trick. We've got the strata all put together, constructed. We're going to put the custard over it. Do not just pour it over. I'm doing it on a sheet pan right. with the rim so that it catches any kind of overrun. So we're going to make sure that we get So you don't want a big mess but, No, here. you don't want a big mess. Right. So if you just ladle it, start mm -hmm. in the center. And the reason you're going to let this sit overnight is you're going to make sure that, uh, you see, all this Let's just go measuring soak couple, it up. all, all this, the custard is going to mm -hmm. get soaked in right. by those three layers of bread. So that's why you kind of have to go 
over top slowly but surely. Make sure it gets down in the sides. But I have it over in the rimmed pants that if we do happen to overshoot the sides at all, we can just go on ahead and uh, take the pan off mm -hmm. of the sheet pan and pour the, what the remainder is in the sheet pan over the sides also. Just like this. Nice. Very nice. And you can see the fresh nutmeg is sitting on the very top. top. And ma makes it, it's like I said, just gives that flavor. Um, I, I've told so many people that, that this is almost like a cross between French toast and quiche. It's uh, by now that we have just the very end. It's so easy. I mean, yes, exactly. Yeah. But as like I said, if you mm -hmm. have if you have kids that don't like uh, that don't like asparagus, uh, you use some else. If you want to throw mushrooms in it or do Bacon. whatever you want, Bacon, anything, anything. Just make sure that a lot of it is like either blanched or cooked beforehand and then just before we wrap it up to put in the fridge overnight put the remaining cheese all over the top you just dump it on and spread it with your hands i'm a fingers person i'm a hands person i will use my fingers and hands i figured these are mm -hmm. god spatulas anyways mm -hmm. you know so this is going to be around. really really delicious and guess what we have a finished one yes. we have one that i already baked Yes. So, so like that, wrap it up, put it in the fridge. And here you have it. One this hour at 350 degrees the next day. Take it out of the oven. Let it cool off for about five minutes and set up. The, uh, the puffiness will go back down and everything. And it's ready to cut and serve. And if you need to warm it up, it warms up in a microwave outstandingly well. So you can't go wrong with a strata. It's well, Bruce, always good stuff. We are so excited that you got to come here to Blackhawk to film with us today. Thank you. I'm and, like I said, I'm excited to be and here. And you know, for more of your recipes, you need to check out Bruce on the Ingalls table. And also, if you're in Marion, North Carolina. Yep. Bruce's Fabulous Foods. Come in for lunch Monday through mm -hmm. Friday. I'd love to serve you lunch. And don't forget about those cheesecakes. And cheesecakes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. For being on the show, and we'll be right back. At Ingalls, we know the ever-present struggle of, what am I going to make for dinner this week? That's why we started The Ingalls Table. It's a website that brings the best chefs and food experts right into your kitchen. You can sort through hundreds of recipes for every occasion, watch how-to videos, and print shopping lists to take to the store. It's all waiting for you at IngallsTable.com. Until next time, I'll see you online. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. Welcome back to Field of Fork, and I'm here today with my next guest from Temperance House Fine Coffee. Welcome to the show, Lawrence Bridges. You are my entrepreneur on the show today, and it's because you have such a great coffee house in Demarest, Georgia. Where did Temperance House, where did the name come from? Well, there in Demarest, Georgia, it was born out of the temperance movement back in the 1800s. A, a gentleman named William Demarest from North uh, uh, New York uh, started it and uh, the temperance movement uh, were these communities and so uh, Demarest was one of those communities that was born out of that and so it was a with alcohol without alcohol without without, without alcohol an alcohol free area so that was the temperance movement and so a little bit of history from Demarest Georgia is temperance house coffee well, you've been open how long now? We've been open since August 1st, so we're right at six months, and I always ask everybody, mm -hmm. always ask me, how's it going? I said, well, I'll let you know in six months. Well, things are going very, very well for us. I think they are. You've got a wonderful setup right beside the college, Piedmont College, and uh, winter time is here, and that's when I drink a lot of coffee. And tell us a little bit about coffee in general, uh, about what is a uh, would you call a a real rich uh, coffee strong in caffeine and what is not because the names don't really correspond with what they really are they are there's uh there's two types of uh coffees out there in the world is a robusto or arabica uh, you'll find the arabica more than you do of the robusto uh, but the robusto gives some more of those like it says robust flavors uh, 
throughout the world uh, around the equator is the, the coffee belt. And there's many countries that have uh, these uh, these coffee farms that are on those, and Brazil being the largest producer. But what a lot of people don't know is that when you get a lighter roast, which is sometimes only roasted two to three minutes in a roaster, you're getting more caffeine. So like the, a blonde roast. Yes, a like blonde if you get... or a medium roast, you're going to get more caffeine in that, in the final product of your coffee, than you would say out of a dark roast, which is spent maybe up to 30 minutes in a roaster. Well, I knew there was a reason I like the blonde roast. It's, it has more caffeine and it's really a deceptive. It the is, word it seems an is, opposite. Yeah, it's really, the word is deceptive, blonde. And you would think that's lighter and lighter in, but what you get with the darker is more flavor, right? And that's just it, with the different beans, the different temperatures, the different lengths of the roast in the roaster gives you the different complex uh, flavors that you're, uh, that you're seeing and tasting mm -hmm. also. To me, when I open a bag of coffee, for me, my nose, I smell chocolate. So a lot of other people smell something that might smell like fruit. Uh, and so there's just different aspects of that. So uh, five different people are gonna smell the same coffee five different ways. So what is your best seller? What we have the most of that we have found uh, that we've used a lot and we continue to change. But uh, our house coffee right now is a Costa Rican black honey. And we found it's a medium, between a medium and a dark roast. So mm -hmm. we're, asked, we're getting that the caffeine that a lot of people are wanting to, you know, to get that buzz, if you want to call it that. But not overdo day, it. But not overdo right. it. And then also they're getting the flavors also they want to get through the dark roast. So you've got an equal balance of both of those, which go hand in hand, especially with college students. Very and, much so. And everyone, really. You yes. don't want to go too much. When you uh, start getting into those dark roasts, you get some of the flavors that are so strong, it's just truly overpowering. Then you get into the bitterness and you're getting away from the smoothness of what coffee's truly about. Mm -hmm. So what are your plans for Temperance House? Well, like I so said, we've been open six months. We're going to venture on out and we're talking with different roasters uh, of getting our own combinations of carrying our own uh, in-house coffees. But hopefully in the next six months, we're going to start roasting our own. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing a coffee distribution, so we're going to be getting our coffees out into the northeast oh, Georgia nice. area. So uh, I could carry it here, right? Yes, you absolutely could. So we're going to be, get out there with Temperance House Coffee. Mm -hmm. There'll be different blends. There'll also be some single source uh, beans that are from single source farms mm -hmm. uh, from particular countries. But a lot of people don't understand what blends are. Going back to, you have blended whiskeys and things like that, so you're looking for a particular flavor or taste. Mm -hmm. Same way with coffees. Uh, you blend different beans together from mm -hmm. different regions to get a particular taste that you want. Right, right. So in part of your restaurant or your coffee house, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to have pastries and things, right? Like these are some pumpkin just donut holes. I yes. mean, these are the things that people like to just come in and maybe have a bite people or like something. People like to have a small bite with the with their coffees. Uh, with those, uh, you know, some people have always asked, and this is the joke of us, hey, Lawrence, what are you mm -hmm. doing? Well, I've got a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Well, what kind of food you got? And I'm like, well, we're a coffee shop, not a restaurant. But mm -hmm. we do have a small uh, offering of uh, muffins, scones, several quiches that we have. So it's probably going to grow into more. Yes, and it probably because will you've got metamorphose the, you, yeah. on, on into other things. And that's truly what the customer is looking for. Mm -hmm. So we do want to serve our community. Well, that's wonderful. How many employees do you have? Well, right now, just one. But it, <laughs> with, with myself and another uh, mm -hmm. gentleman, uh, Johnny, that helps me a great mm -hmm. deal. It's actually at the shop as we speak. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, one of those growing pains is hiring more employees and that was one of the things we realized back in uh probably about a month ago that we were going to start having to add on three maybe even five mm -hmm. employees but with that comes all the problems and issues mm -hmm. but with those it's a growing pain that we look forward to so uh, what what really lawrence inspired you to do this i mean you've that this is a big uh Endeavor, a, it, it really is a big endeavor a big to have your own business, it, and I have mine. So I know from the many years of of getting people to work for us, or or even a housekeeper, you know, <laughs> it's it, it's really it's, it's when you step out on your own, you become your own mm -hmm. boss. Everybody thinks, well, you know, hey, you're 
it's just the greatest thing in the world. You own your own business. It's totally different than doing a nine to five, eight to four, whatever it may be. It really means more responsibility. It truly is, it takes on more responsibility. But with that, you get that self-satisfaction of owning your own business and producing something for the public. But uh, for me, literally, uh, in the coffee shop world, uh, my buddies kind of talked mm -hmm. me into this, but it's turned out to be a good thing. They were able to see something in me that I didn't see in myself that I could bring out and offer to my community. Well, what I see is that you have a vision, and most people that are entrepreneurs, if they don't have that vision, they fail. And when I talked to you, when I walked into that your, your temperance house, uh, I just felt like you have a plan and you have a good plan. It's working. Everything in there is just an opportunity. And, uh, and it is one of the things that we've tried to do is, is partner with Piedmont College, which is across the street from us, to get some people more involved in uh, business because uh, there is a huge business department that's over there. And so I get some of the students that come in and uh, they want to see what it's like. And I said, these are the things that are that you're involved in in starting a business. Uh, something as simple as just getting a business license, they don't know about these things. And we're trying to acclimate them into that. But looking, being able to look down the road as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. uh, is, is a wonderful thing. Well, I noticed that you're just organized in the vision, the organization, the passion. Those are the things that make you successful. And, and the drive. You have to love what you're doing. And, and that's something I can see. And that was one of the things mm -hmm. that you and I talked about several weeks ago uh, at a get together of, you know, where were you so many years ago? And it was truly through that drive and that fortitude and looking down the road to be able to get to where you are now, Abby. And I, I look at all this and I'm just like, wow, if I could even catch up halfway to you, I would be successful. But, uh, that's what it is. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes planning mm -hmm. and planning and planning. Planning and still planning. And planning more. I mean, you know, I'm I'm hoping to open up a flower farm uh, this this year. That's my dream, and I don't know how that's going to go. Well, but you, you know, it's you something I I, I just I, I started planting zinnias in honor of my dad, and just people love them. They want to come by. They stop by. They want to buy them, and I give them away, of course. But I'm going I'm going to take this on, I think, and uh, see what happens. Maybe you need some flowers. <laughs> always need flowers. It always looks good. But but yes. anyway, I I really want to. Thank you for coming on the show. Is there anything you want to tell the audience about where they can find you and what hours you're open? And we're in downtown Demarest, Georgia. Uh, we're at 551 Georgia Street. You can Google that and find us, I hope. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes it uh, gets a little crazy on Google Maps. But we're open right now, uh, Monday through Friday, from 630 in the morning until 3. Saturdays are 730 until noon. But I always tell anybody... Our set are not necessarily the ones that we stick to. We work anytime. If there's customers there, we stick around and enjoy the time that we have with them. We're going to be opening three nights a week starting sometime in January. So that was some, nice. of the, some of the, co uh, the coffee crowd that wanted to come in the evenings. And also, the biggest thing is our college students, they're going to be coming over. So we're going to be offering game board night on Thursday nights. Mm -hmm. Friday night, we're going to have some live music. We already started that uh, last weekend. Uh, and then Saturday night, something like movie night. So some mm -hmm. of the things that we'll get the public coming in in the evenings. Well, you have a, a place where you can go and study or, or uh, hook up a, a laptop and, and, and hang out. And, and yeah, that's, that, yeah, this is not just where you go get a cup of coffee and leave. You have a place for people to really yeah. enjoy and relax yeah. in your space. So that's wonderful. And the best of luck to you. Thank you for well, being on the so show. Much, and I appreciate you coming on. And, and I, again, best of luck. And we'll be right back. Thank you. Finally, TV made for you. Introducing the all-new Kinetic TV, the next generation of entertainment. With multi-streaming, watch different programs on multiple devices at the same time. Over 10,000 video on-demand movies and shows. Plus, Kinetic TV gives you the power to instantly watch 72 hours of previously aired programs with replay. Never worry about forgetting to record a show. Experience the future of entertainment with Kinetic TV. 
Welcome back to Field of Fork, and my last recipe uh, for this show is going to be my kale, walnut, and pear salad. And in the wintertime, uh, I grow a lot of root vegetables, and kale is ha happens to be one of them. This kale salad um, is really, really good for you. What I do is just take off the kale from the stem, and you know, you, you really want to get this in small little bites and what I do is add a little lemon juice to this and I massage the leaves to where they become a little bit softened and this takes a, a it brings the taste a little bit more um, palatable and you're, you're gonna really like it better if you massage this in lemon juice before you make your salad um, the other thing we want to do is make the dressing for this as this soaks in the lemon juice and you don't want to put the stem in there the the dressing happens to be uh, about three tablespoons of honey get that in there uh, about a third cup of olive oil and then just about a half juice from a lemon you want to stir this up Get those ingredients incorporated as so. And what I do is, this is a, enough salad for about three people. You can double this if you want, but you wanna put this on a plate. And this is so good for you, especially if you're trying to lose weight in the new year. This is a good way to, to do it. And this is some uh, apples that I've uh, shredded and some pears. You want to just take the pears and put on the side. And then we'll take the dressing and just drizzle over. And we'll top this off with some gorgonzola cheese, just a little bit and some toasted pecans and that's very easy very simple and very good for you so i hope you've enjoyed the show and we will see you next time thanks so much for joining us for today's program we look forward to having you back next time on field to fork cooking with abby J. this program is brought to you in part by ingles supermarkets and the ingles table and is a video production of Kinetic TV.